Here we're asked to analyze the data in the dollars and cents problem and come up with a symbolic representation or model for each of the situations. I've included the situations up here so that you can refer to them and review what the different options were. I've also included a subset of each of the tables for option A and B so we can check our models and see if they're working. So let's talk about option A. For option A, you received $1,000 on December 31st and then $1,000 every day after that. So if I think about how my funds would accumulate, then for my model, what I would start with is the initial value, which was the $1,000. And then every day I would add $1,000. So let's see. When I start, I get 1,000 because I'm at time zero. That gives me 1,000. And in fact, let's go to our calculator and go to Y equals and type in 1,000 plus 1,000 x and then let's check our table but let's do something a little bit creative with our table let's go to second table set I'm gonna make sure my table starts at zero and then I'm gonna scroll down with my arrows to where it says independent that's the x variable or independent that's the input and using my arrows I'm gonna scroll over to ask and press enter so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to just enter these values instead of having to scroll all the way down to the table. So now if I go to my table, second table, I can see that it's waiting for me to enter my input values. So if input is zero and I press enter, output is a thousand. That works. If input is one, output is two thousand. We're on a roll. If input is 10, after 10 days, I should have $11,000, that's true. 21 days, I get 22,000. And 31 days, that's my last day of January, I should have $32,000. So this model does indeed represent the data that I have presented there. And it is 1,000 plus 1,000 times t. It's a little confusing with all the pluses and the t's. But this should look pretty familiar to you. This is a y equals mx plus b function, better known as a linear function. All right, I'm going to jump down to option c. Take $30,000 on the spot and be done with it, meaning for a model that no matter how much time passes, all I have is $30,000. So if you remember, this is an equation of the form y equals a number, y equals a number, which is a horizontal line. It is still linear and it is a specific kind of linear function called a constant function because no matter what the input is, the outputs do not change. So let's jump back to B and let's go back to our Y equals here because we're going to put in another function in just a minute. But let's talk about function B or model B and how we're going to accumulate funds. Well, much like in option A, we start with an amount. We start with a penny. In option A, to get from output 1 to output 2, I add $1,000. In option B, to get from output 1 to output 2, I multiply by 2. So I'm going to put 2, so just like I had 1,000 times t, I'm going to do 2, but I'm going to raise it to the t power, and I'm going to see if that works. So notice the t here is in an exponent place, and here it is not, it is just in a multiply place. So if we go from our y equals down to our second, our y2, and enter 0 0.01, parentheses 2 to the t, and the reason I picked 2, actually it's 2 to the x, is because that's the amount I'm multiplying by to get from one output to the next. So let's go to our table again. And because I had already input these input values and they're the same ones for 
the B option, let's see if they match up. So I'm looking down all of these values. Now what about the fourth one? Looks like it might not match, but if I scroll down and make sure my cursor is on that number, I can see the whole number, which is the same as the number here, including the decimals. Going down to the next one, again, I have $21,474,836.48. That's my ending amount. Gosh, it'd be nice if I had an uncle that would give me that much money. Um, that'd be awesome. So that is my ending amount. It does work. The model works. And so what I have is 0 0.01 times 2 to the T. And this is called, this is our new type of model, an exponential model. So you can see a little bit of the difference between option A, which is the linear model, and option B, which is exponential. Mainly that with the linear model, we're going from one output to the next through addition. And in an exponential model, we're going from one output to the next by multiplication.